Screen Directors Playhouse stars Douglas Fairbanks, Paula Morgan. Production, the captain from Castile. Director, Henry King. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse. One of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Among Towels, America's number one bestseller. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison, for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio... First in recorded music, first in television. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present transcribed an adaptation of an exciting story of romance and adventure. It is The Captain from Castile. Now, Act One of The Captain from Castile, starring Douglas Fairbanks as Pedro de Vargas with Paula Morgan as Katana. Gentese, senor. By your leave. Juan Garcia is my name. Pedro de Vargas. You have been to the Indies, senor? For many years. Tell me about the Indies, senor. That word sets your imagination on fire, doesn't it? (laughs) Well, why not? It's a new world, my friend. Listen, I've stood on the waterfront of Santiago and looked north, and you could feel the great land out there. Tell me, senor, is it true that there's a country on the southern sea where heathen Indians live in palaces and and eat their food off plates of gold? Aye, and all that. Kingdoms, empires, mountains of gold, just waiting to be taken by the first cavalier with spirit enough to venture. Ha! Ah, here's our wine, caballero. Drink. A toast to the new world, senor. The new world. When Pedro de Vargas left the Peon Juan and rode his white charger along the Spanish countryside, the year was 1517, 25 years since Christopher Columbus had made his first voyage to the Americas. As Pedro entered his father's castle, he was greeted by the voices of his father and a guest whom he disliked, Diego de Silva. And that's how it was, senor. You found no trace of your missing servant, Diego? No, senor de Vargas. It is my belief that uh, someone gave the Indian aid. But he'll be taken, at which time the Inquisition will deal with him. You are an intimate of the Inquisidor General, are you not, senor? I have the honor to be the El Supremo of the Santa Hermandad. It is my duty to pass sentence on those poor sinners whom the Holy Office has found guilty of heresy. Oh, uh, by the way, it seems strange to me that a man of your name and fame should not be one of us. I am not a theologian. Nor am I. Is it possible, senor, you do not approve of the Santa Hermandad? I do not approve, sir. I, too, am a Catholic. And have given more blood for the faith than you have in your entire body. But I regard the Santa Hermandad as an evil. I'm against any organization, sir, which turns friend against friend, child against father. Do I make myself plain? Quite plain. Oh, but why do you wish to pick a quarrel with me? I came here peaceably and alone, though injured by your son. I injured you, senor? How? If I attack two of your servants, Pedro and opened the face of one and slashed one of your dogs, wouldn't you call it an injury? Add to it your men set their dogs on a girl, senor. That makes a difference. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot. Uh, It was the wench, Katana, from the Rosario Inn, of whom it appears you are unduly fond. That's a lie. A lie? That you rode her to the privacy of the Rosario? Or did my servants see wrong? Senor, my son's conduct is a matter I'll settle with has nothing to do with what we were discussing. If anything I have said displeased you, I shall be glad to give you satisfaction at your pleasure. And I, senor. Thank you. But suppose you leave the question of satisfaction to me. Buenos dias, senores. 
man is a coward. Pedro, about this girl... It's true, Father. She rode with me on my horse to the Rosario. She's a servant girl, Katana, who works at the inn. But you've openly paid your respects to the Lady Luisa. Nothing happened. About De Silva's missing Indian servant. Coatl. Yes, I helped him escape. He was a friend. We hunted and ate together. He was captured and brought to this country as a slave. But Coatl was no slave. In his country across the sea, he was a lord. <laughs> you should have called on me. I, too, would have helped. Give my respects to Lady Louisa when you call on her this evening. Your servant plays beautifully, senorita. Thank you, senor Vargas. May I tell you something, senorita? Yesterday in church, a ray of sunlight slanting through one of the narrow windows rested on your face. I held my breath, senorita. I knew at once it was a divine revelation. Oh, Pedro. That you were destined to be my lady of ladies. I knew then that I would always adore you, serve you, and, and I hope that one day I may be worthy that you may care for me. Love me as I love you. Oh, my handkerchief, where is it? May I keep it as a token, as a favor to wear? Yes, though I wish I had something better to give you. Better? The golden fleece from the hands of his majesty could not mean half as much. Tomorrow night, senorita. Bye, con Dios. Senor. Huh? Pedro de Vargas. What do you want? Who is it? It's me, Catana Perez. Oh. I've been here for an hour hoping to head you off. Head me off from what? You mustn't go home. They've laid a trap for you. They? Who? The Inquisition. What? Your father, mother, and sister have been arrested. But what have they done? The charge is heresy. Heresy? My father and mother, heretics? It's a lie. You've no time to lose. The Marquess de Carvajal, my father's best friend, my betrothed's father. He'll advise, he'll help. You know best, senor. Only, senor, if anything goes wrong, if you need me... Oh, thank you, thank you, Gatana. You'd better go. They mustn't catch you helping me. God go with you, senor. <laughs> I apologize, Senor Marquez, for intruding. My father and mother and sister have been arrested by the Holy Office. The Inquisition? But you know my family is not guilty of heresy. Why, my sister's just a child. I knew if I came here, you'd give me advice. If this were a case before the civil courts, but the Inquisition is a different matter. What right has a layman to interfere in spiritual affairs? Perhaps something in your parents' lives. But you know them, sir. You know there couldn't be anything. My boy, you are blinded by natural affection. There is no guilt. Your parents will go free. Your advice, then? Is to rely on God, my dear boy. In the meanwhile, proceed at once to the prison and give yourself up. And deprive my family of the one voice outside the prison left to take their part. It would show your innocence and be an act of loyalty to your parents. I thank you, Senor Marquez, for your advice. You are quite welcome. It is a pleasure to be of help the son of an old friend. My servant will show you to the door. If my father were in your place and a member of your family came to him for help, he would have advanced to the very gates of hell without looking back to give you aid. I hope he never learns that I have brought dishonor on his name by even coming to you. Get out. <laughs> Well, you came here to my courtroom, Pedro, and now you're manacled and chained. You lied, didn't you? And you lied again and again when you said you gave no aid to my escaped heretic, this Indian dog who calls himself a lord. Admit you lied because you hate the Santa Hermandad. Your silence calls for punishment you may not like, Senor de Silva. It will do you little good to waste your threats on someone who does not fear them. It would be wiser for you to explain this outrage upon my family. I demand to know what you've done with my mother and father and sister. You demand? The charges you have brought against them have no foundation in truth, and you know it. I here and now accuse you of bearing false witness for reasons of cowardice. Guards, bring in the other prisoners. Yes, sir. In a moment, senor. Hold on. Hold on. Father. 
<laughs> my son. Senor de Silva, I thought there was a cursed bad smell in this place. This is not a moment for swagger, Francisco de Vargas. A gag may teach you what old age has not. Do you confess the crime of which you stand charged? Confess that I'm a heretic, an unbeliever, that I taught irreverence to my family? The lie is black. Mm -hmm. From the lips of children, we're apt sooner to hear the truth. Guards, begin with the girl. Oh, no. Apply the cord. No. Oh, oh, no. no, no, please, senor, please, take me, take me, please, senor, take me. She's so young, so innocent. No, my dear, don't. Would you give this lout the satisfaction? Wait, please, not her. I'll confess. I'll confess anything if you'll just release her. No, Pedro, you'll not save her by a lie. De Silva, if you do this thing, look to your own soul. Apply the cords. Tighter. her. <laughs> Grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou on most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Senor, the girl has fainted. What shall we do now? Well, revive her. Oh, please, please, Senor. She's just a baby. Please, Senor. She's just a little baby. We can't revive her. She's dead. Dead? God has shown his mercy. Upon you rest his curse, De Silva. Now for a special announcement about Cannon Towels. Always good news, Cannon Towels are today's big news. Hurry, 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 hurry to the greatest May towel sales in history. Famous Cannon Towel sales. Packed with value, big, beautiful buys, terrific bargains. Don't miss them. Get to your store now and get in on these great money-saving events. Cannon Towels give you the most for your money in beauty, value, lovely color, and design. Cannon Towels absorb more, wear longer, stay lovely longer. No wonder more people buy Cannon Towels than all other towels combined. Get the most for your money. Get Cannon. Big, fluffy, thirsty Cannon Towels. As summer comes, you always need more towels. Now's the time to get them. And the towels to get are cannons right now in these big cannon towel sales. See them in your newspaper. Get to your store quickly. Get in on the big, big, big cannon values. Now the second act of the screen director's playhouse presentation of The Captain from Castile, starring Douglas Fairbanks with Paula Morgan. It was very late that same night, and Pedro in his prison cell was heavily manacled. Suddenly, the jail door opened and a man stealthily entered. It was Juan Garcia, the peon from the Indies whom Pedro had befriended. He was dressed as a prison guard. Are you awake? Juan Garcia, how did you get in here? I bought this job of turnkey to be here near my mother. Your mother in here? Yes, the Inquisition accused her of heresy. They sentenced her to be burned at the stake. But they'll not burn her now. She's dead. Dead? Catana Perez told me about it, so I came here to help. Here, I'll unlock the manacles. We'll make a break for it as soon as we can. But my father and mother are here in prison. If I run away, there's no telling what they'll do to them. Everything is arranged. Your father and mother are already outside in the care of Katana. Better put the manacles back on. Uh, do not lock them. And uh, hide this sword. You'll need it when the time comes. I don't know how to thank you. I... Save it until later, Caballero. Someone's coming. Guard! What are you doing in here? Uh, seeing that the prisoner is properly secured, Senor de Silva. Get out. Muy bien, Senor. Well, Pedro, I see you're awake. I, uh... 
I'm prepared to offer you leniency, provided you sign a confession that you and your parents are guilty of heresy. Otherwise, I shall have no recourse but to remove you. When you remove someone, senor, you are careful not to risk your own skin, which is probably wise. If you mean I do not give swashbucklers the satisfaction of a duel, you're quite right. My object is uh, to dispose of them simply as a warning to others. In the end, you will learn my method is thorough. As thorough as your dishonor, if possible. Dirty-tongued infants must be taught politeness. Yes, I'll teach you politeness. The manacles, they're open. And I carry a sword. Out with yours. Well, what about satisfaction now, De Silva? Where is your policy and method, huh? Guard! Guard, help me! Help yourself! Do not come out of the cell or I will kill you. There. I've stripped you of your sword, De Silva. Mercy. For God's sake, have mercy. Now you're unarmed and I have the point to your heart. Mercy. You wouldn't kill an unarmed man, De Vargas. You wouldn't murder me. Bareheaded before death, coward. I'll let you go free. You have one moment left. Spend it thinking of the child, my sister, that you murdered. Have mercy, have mercy, I beg you, I beg you. You'd make amends, yes, perhaps? Yes. You'd secure our release? Yes. Make public apology? Yes, 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 anything, everything. Can I trust I you? I swear it, I swear it before God. Oh, no, not before God, De Silva. Perhaps if you renounced your faith in God, I'd believe you. You have defiled everything that the church stands for. Now renounce your faith in God. Yes, yes, anything, I'll renounce God. Spare my life. My answer is... This sword through your heart. <laughs> oh, now answer to God for your crime. Cross up, Pedro. The guards are coming. Follow me. Manuel. Take this trail to the north. See that my parents get aboard a boat bound for Italy. Let's go. We mustn't tarry. Goodbye, mother. Bear yourself well, my son. My blessings go with you. God be with you, Pedro. Adios. And now, Captain Juan, my very loyal friends, we go in this direction. There they are. This way, you prison whelps! How does it feel, senor, to be free, to have thrown off our pursuers? Wonderful, Katana. This dark forest, it is beautiful. Yes, Katana. That handkerchief, is she beautiful, senor? She? Who? The lady whose handkerchief you carry over your heart. Very beautiful. A great and lovely lady I'm privileged to serve. Who is she, senor? The Lady Luisa de Carvajal. Huh? It's me, Juan. Well? Nothing to fret about. Oh, you should have been with me, lad. I went right into San Lucar and ran into an old friend of mine, Jorge Santerra. Never mind about that, but... Did you find out when there's a ship for Italy which will take me? Your ship's the Julia, ah. sailing in about a week. Oh, this friend of mine, he was telling me that before he left Cuba, all the talk was about vast armada that Governor Valesquez is fitting out to take over a new land, a country full of gold. He told me every politician in the places, hanging around the governor like a pack of dogs after meat, scheming for the command. The talk was that Hernan Cortez would get it. Who's Hernan Cortez? A very courageous soldier. Come on, lad. This is the chance of a lifetime. Forget Italy. Let's go to the Indies. They say that every man that goes with Cortez will share in the profits and come back rich. No, it's impossible. My family will be expecting me in Italy. I mustn't fail them. Besides, what, what is this itch that's got hold of you? Isn't there anything else in life but gold? Perhaps. Well, there's a lot to be said for gold, too. It got you out of prison, didn't it? Besides, you're wrong about the island. We talk of gold, but maybe we mean something else. Gold is just the excuse. Have you space for me on the Bonifacio, senor? For you, Catana? Why not? What has Europe to offer me? If I'm taken here, it means death. Italy would be no better. Catana, 
My mother's kinsmen are the Strutzes. One of my uncles is a cardinal. If you went there, they'd look after you. Perhaps. But I'd be a sousier just the same. In the islands, it's different. Juan says it's what you are, not who you are that counts. It's a new world. So it is, Pedro. Europe's an old road. This is a new one. Change your mind, lad. Think of what can happen. You'll come home your head high, on horseback, rich, famous, exonerated. All the things you long for. Isn't this the answer, senor, to everything you want for yourself, for your family, and for the one whose handkerchief you carry? All right. I'll go. Bravo, now you're talking good sense. To the Indies. To the new road. <laughs> his name. Know everyone that the fleet now in Havana Harbor will sail by authority of His Excellency Diego Velasquez, Governor of Cuba, for trade, settlement, and discovery under the command of Hernan Cortez. And bless my guts if it isn't Juan Garcia. Come back, <laughs> I thought I'd find you here. Have you seen Cortez yet? That's what I'm here for. Meet my friends Pedro de Vargas, Catana Perez. This is Professor Botelho. He is an astrologer and a sawbones. He reads the stars better than I can a book. Uh, what are you doing here, Professor? I signed on to give Captain Cortez wisdom of what the stars have in store for him. To mend any bones that are broken? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on. Let's all have a drink. Oh, uh, no, no. Not, not until after we've had a talk with Captain Cortez. Come on, Juan, Katana. Let's go and sign up. Uh -huh. Enroll for God and His Majesty Don Carlos. Carry the light of our blessed faith with those It's Captain Cortez. Huh? At your service. Pedro de Vargas of Hein, Spain. Huh? Are you a relative of Francisco de Vargas? His sons are. Well, our fathers were friends. I'm delighted to have you join us in this venture. If you have the spirit and merit of your father, you'll prove worthy of promotion and a command. Thank you, Captain. Oh, uh, Senor, this is Father Bartolome. Father. How do you do, sir? And here we have Senor Juan Escudero. Senor de Vargas? How do you do? Uh, Senor Escudero is a representative of His Excellency, the Governor of Cuba. He came here to relieve me of my command. <laughs> But I believe I have successfully convinced him that I am going to be captain of this company. Or there isn't going to be any captain. Hey, Escudero? Pedro. Oh, Father Bartolo. Uh, don't get up, Pedro. I'll join you here on the beach. Yeah, uh, sand is very comforting. Yes, yeah, so it is. But not the infernal waiting to cast off. When is Captain Cortez going to give the word? Oh, it won't be very long. Mm -hmm. Have patience. What were you thinking of when I arrived? Home? Yes, Father. How did you know? <laughs> when a young man sits staring to the east with a lady's handkerchief in his hands, of what else should he be thinking but of his home and his sweetheart? <laughs> Well, cheer up. Perhaps your dreams will come true. If I only get half of what I want, Father, I'll be satisfied. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Why haven't you been to Mass? Because I killed a man. And I'd kill him again without hesitation. Go on. But I... I duped the coward into renouncing God before I killed him. That's why I haven't been to Mass. Who was the man? Diego de Silva, El Supremo of the Santa Hermandad. Why did you kill him? He caused the death of my sister, the imprisonment of my parents, the loss of everything I loved. And now, Father, I... I've placed myself in your hands. No, my son. You've been in my hands for two days. Except for forcing de Silva to renounce God... You've told me nothing I do not already know. You have a penance to perform, my son. Pray for the soul of Diego de Silva. This is more of a penance than you think. God's love is a heavy burden. Are you prepared to carry it out? What is demanded of you is not easy. Do you, as you hope for salvation, accept the penance? Yes, Father. Yay! Yay! Captain! 
President Cortez will speak. Men and our beautiful ladies, this land we seek, this new world, holds out to us a glorious prize. But it must be won. Great things were never achieved without exertion. We are few in numbers, but strong in resolution. Put your faith in me and the Almighty, and we will go forward and carry to a glorious conclusion the work so auspiciously begun. To your ships, my friends, and prepare to cast anchor. Here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make the Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Buy Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival. The third act of The Captain from Castile will continue after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue now with the third act of The Captain from Castile, starring Douglas Fairbanks as Pedro de Vargas, with Paula Morgan as Katana. Picture, if you will, the color, the dress, the medieval crossbows, cannons, swords of the year 1517. And realize that Hernan Cortez Armada crossed an ocean only by sail and muscle and arrived in the new world at the tip of the wondrous land of what we now call Mexico. Settled only by the Indian tribes of the Emperor Montezuma, they were greeted there by Indian ambassadors with rich prizes and fabulous jewels. But with a definite warning to progress no farther and return home, To this, Hernan Cortez replied, The great Emperor Montezuma sends nuggets of gold to us prospectors and then asks us not to visit the mines. (laughs) Does he think we sailed all this distance with the idea of riding back and forth in trade? Everyone, listen. Tomorrow, we sail in the direction of Montezuma. But for now, fiesta! Senor Botelho, I'm in love with Pedro de Vargas. Well, what can I do? You're wise, Senor Botelho, and have secret powers. Uh-huh. If you could give me a charm, something that, that would win him, that would make him care for me. Ah, uh, extend your thumb, Captain. Yes? On the finger I place this ring. In a minute you'll feel the heat of it. Such is the power of love it holds. You're sure it will work, Senor Potato? <laughs> Try and see. Go to the campfire and join the others now. Yes. Katana, come on. Give us a zarabanda. Yes, yes, it takes two to do the zarabanda, Juan. Who's dancing against me? Did you ask?
You're beautiful, Katana. I didn't realize you were so beautiful. It came to me while I sat at the fire that I loved you. It's like a fever. Oh, please, senor. You don't know what you're saying. You don't love me. Bella adorada mia. It's this ring. I tell you, it's this ring. What's the ring to do with us? But tell you, let me wear it. I wanted to make you love me, but now I know it isn't love. It's the spell of magic. What sort of nonsense is this? It's true, senor. I couldn't wait for you to come to me of your own accord. I had to put a spell on you. But I did come to you of my own accord. Will you marry me, Katana? What did you say, my lord? Father Bartolome is waiting. He'll marry us tonight. You're mad, senor. Noblemen don't marry camp girls. You could never return to Spain. We're not going back to Spain. You're of this world, this new world. Together we will make it our world. Oh, my love, my wife. Pedro and Katana were married that same night. The following day, 508 men and women set out on another perilous lap to reach their goal, the Emperor Montezuma. Short of their goal by many leagues to the west, they arrived at Villarica in the Gulf of Mexico and again were met by Indian ambassadors. This time they were given a king's ransom, but with a sterner warning not to proceed any farther. Pedro was selected by Cortez to guard the treasure and the jewels. Katana, adorada mia. My love. Pedro, Pedro, come quick. Juan is drunk and fighting. No one can control him but you. He will be killed if you do not hurry. I cannot leave. I'm watching this treasure. But he will be killed, I tell you. Katana, stay out here and guard this door to the temple. No, you must not leave. Senor Cortez. Juan is my friend and savior. Come, Bateo. <laughs> Quiet, Katana? Not a sound. That one. What a terror he is when he gets drunk. He kept screaming over and over, These dogs, they'll not burn my mother. I'll kill her with my own hands first. Well, it was not easy to subdue him. <sighs> Let's have a look inside the temple. Senor... There is an opening in the back wall. Where? Over here. A secret door. Someone has entered the temple from the back while I was gone. The trunk. The lock is open. Katana. Katana, the gems. The gems are gone. Since when have you taken the liberty of opening a chest, De Vaga? Senor Cortez. The gems, they have been stolen. By whom? Yourself? Be good enough to hand them over. But I don't have them, sir. You lie. No, my lord. I, I swear it on my father. I came in and found the lock broken. Were you outside guarding the temple all evening? No, I left my post and had just returned. You disobeyed orders? Deserted your post? Juan Garcia was ill, sir. They sent for me. So, a soldier in charge of an important post walks off at his pleasure to hold the hand of a sick friend. Very charitable. We'll deal with that in its place. Did you leave the door open when you left? No, sir. It was locked. Heaven, give me patience. Do you expect me to believe someone walked through solid masonry into this room? Now, hand over those gems. Don't force me to have you stripped. Whoever took those gems, sir, came through that door in the wall. You're under arrest. Please, look, sir. Hmm? Hmm. Bless my soul, you're right. Where's the lock to the chest you opened? Right here. Hmm. Give it to me. Well, that's odd. This lock has been filed. The Indians have no steel. It must have been one of our own men. I should hate to see you hang, De Vargas. But I have no doubt that will be the decision of my captains. Unless these priceless gems are recovered. I give you until this hour tomorrow to recover them. You're relieved of your duty. <laughs> But who was it, Pedro? Father Bartolome was passing the back of the temple and saw the governor of Cuba's representative, Escudero, coming through the wall of the temple. Huh? It must have been he who stole the gems. But how can you be certain, Pedro? Listen to me, Juan. 
I know that Escudero has gathered a crew of men led by that thieving blackguard, Corio, and they plan on deserting. He has the jewels, I'm certain. Well, we'll soon learn whether you know what you're saying. In a moment, we'll board Senor Escudero's ship. Tie the boat to the side. Si, senor. Careful, Juan. I hear voices. Escudero is in that cabin. Stand close to the door. And we will listen. So we will sail at dawn for Cuba, gentlemen. Senor Escudero, you have the Indian gems with you? Uh, unfortunately, no, Corio. No? What about the secret door to the temple? Well, Pedro de Vargas was on guard, and we couldn't get him away from his post. I even got his friend Juan Garcia drunk and sent for him, but he he wouldn't budge. Draw your sword, Juan. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now. You lie, Escudero! Pedro de Vargas, out of my way, men. Let me have the handling of him. My pleasure, Escudero. Careful, Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. That thieving scoundrel Corio is behind you. I'll take him. Not, Not without your sword, Juan. Uh, yeah. Here, now start praying, beggar. No, you don't, Corio. I'll take both you and Escudero. <laughs> that is a good one. In a moment, you will cease to live, Senor de Vargas. Fight. Don't talk. <laughs> there, Senor de Vargas. Now you two are unarmed. I shall kill you. Before you do, Corio, you'd better ask Escudero what he did with the gems he took from the treasure chest tonight. Stand aside, Corio. Hold your tongue, Escudero. What did you say, de Vargas? Trust one of Cortez's spies to lie. Wait a minute. What makes you say he got the gems? Because he got me to leave my post. Because the gems were taken while I was gone. And because the secret door was left partly open. Senor Escudero was seen leaving from that exit. By whom? Father Bartolome. Father Bartolome. He does not lie. I think I kill you, Escudero. No, no, no. Where are the gems? Here. Here, I... I was only joking before, Corio. Hmm. Can't you take a joke? I... I thought I'd surprise you and the men before we landed in Cuba. You believe me, don't you? Well, of course I believe you. Now that I have the gems. Men, I want you to bear witness that I'm placing them in this safe here. And locking it with this key. Look, gentlemen, look. I now throw this key through this opening into the water. The character of the sea is above suspicion. We shall share the loot when we arrive in Cuba. Place the Vargas and Juan in chains. De Vargas. Wake up, De Vargas. What do you want, Corio? How much would it be worth to Cortez if this ship does not sail for Cuba? A thousand ducats for you. Hmm. The gems in that chest are worth 50 times that. There's no market in Cuba for jewels like those. Huh? Who would you sell them to? Escudero is the man who'd get rich. He already has the ear of the governor. Even as a friend, he's proven how much you can depend on him. I'm not in this for my health. I'm tired of songs and promises. What security have I that Cortez will pay? You've heard of my father? Yes. I swear on his honor, I will show you the way to Cortez's favor. Agreed. I'll get the chains off you and Juan. There, Juan. Yes, yes. There. You're both free. Here's your sword, De Vargas. And we'll take the gems with us. There's no time for us to break open the safe. I hear footsteps. Follow me. We will have to break open the safe. I threw away the wrong key. Uh, Fire. A lucky mistake. Hey, wasn't it? Here. You keep the gems. They're pretty but useless to a poor man. There's a rowboat over the side. Let's get to it. Good. You first, Juan. Gracias, senor. Now you, Corio. Very well. Follow closely on my heels and be quiet. I'm in. Come on! Come on! It's the Vargas! He's escaped! He's escaped! Row for your life, Vargas! Row! How is he, Botelho? I'm glad you got here, Captain Cortez. I'm afraid the good youth is beyond human skill. He's bleeding to death. 
What a pity to see him drain out like a stuck pig. Well, then hitch up your breeches, man, and stop the bleeding. Juan, look into the fire and see if the poker is red hot. Uh, it is. What are you going to do? Hand it to me. I'm going to sear the wound, burn it shut. What are you going to do? Why are you going to burn me? Have mercy, mercy, Juan. I'm here, lad. Juan. Now lie back, easy. Oh. Don't you understand, my boy? It's oh. this or bleed to death. No, hold him. He's got to be oh. perfectly quiet. Get hold of his legs. Sit uh, on his legs. Uh, Captain uh, Cortez, sit on his legs. Uh, help, help me. Somebody help he me. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's rambling. Get hold of his throat. Hold his head still. Uh, be careful, Botelho. If you miss, I'll cut your heart out. Pedro, Pedro. Even my skill can't defeat the will of God. But I've stopped the bleeding. It's a well-seared wound. No. He's breathing. It's true. His heart still beats. He... <laughs> well, why not? In the practice of true science, God often lends a hand. <laughs> and now, if you'll all leave, I'll sit by and help yes. God. Come, girl. Let us leave. He'll live, Katana. You needn't worry. Yes, he'll live. He has to live. Captain Cortez. Yes, little one. There is much work yet for him to do. He'll finish the job. Were it not for him, Escudero would have taken his ship and returned to Cuba to get the aid of Governor Velasquez. Had he succeeded, they would have defeated this expedition, destroyed everything we fought for. Where there's one traitor, there's apt to be two. And we face a repetition of that same danger as long as we have ships waiting for us. But, sir, these ships are our only means of communication and, and retreat. One, if one can't retreat, he must go forward. If we survive this expedition, the order I have given to destroy the Armada will go down in history as a monument to our resolution and courage. If we fail... It doesn't matter, as history will forget us. We will continue with the third act of The Captain from Castile in just a moment. If you suffer from pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is... Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you have received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled... A-N-A-C-I-N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. We return you now to the third act of The Captain from Castile. On foot, this army of 500 gallants marched in their effort to meet the Emperor Montezuma. Pedro, weak but recovered, had been made a captain. Then, haggard and spent, they came to the village of San Antonio Limon, where again ambassadors of the Emperor awaited them. This time there were no gifts, only a threat. A threat that a million Indians would attack them if they did not leave the Mexican territory. Leave the country? Impossible. We have no ships. And I've also learned that Governor Velasquez has sent a thousand soldiers from Cuba to defeat us under the leadership of Diego de Silva. Diego de Silva? Then he was not slain by Pedro. No, we must act at once, divide our force, leave half here, march with the rest to Villarica, and fight. Captain Sandoval, prepare to march immediately. De Vargas! Yes, my lord. You will be captain of the guard here. Retain the Indian ambassadors as a guarantee that there will be no violence while I'm gone. <laughs> Quiet one. All quiet, Pedro. Well, listen there, Gus, again. 
The Indians are a pretty big pack if they rise. We have several cannon to hold them off. There's still enough of us to handle them. I wonder. Why don't you get some rest, amigo? I want to look around first. Look in at our hostages, the Indian ambassadors. Hasta la vista. Senor Pedro. Yes? Senor Pedro, I know you. You not know me. I am Indian you saved from Diego de Silva in Spain. Me, Coatl. Coatl? How did you get here? This, my home. This, my people. Senor Pedro, Castilian. I hate Castilian. But you and I are friends, Coatl. I think of that, senor. I think what you do for me in Spain. I think I speak to you now. Maybe I understand better why you come here. These my people, my gods. We not come tell you stop loving your gods. We not come make you slave. Why you do this, Sayon? Well, I'm afraid I haven't any answer for that. It isn't right for men to worship idols. There's only one true god. Maybe your god, my god, same god. Maybe just call different name. Perhaps. But we're not enemies, you and I. I give a life for you, senor. But you hurt my people. I fight you. I can understand that. I suppose that if I were in your place, I'd do the same. Good night, Coat. Senor. Katana, adorada mia. Sit here beside me. My poor senor. Four days without sleep. Go to sleep, my senor. Oh, my senor. I love you. I love you so much it hurts. I... I am so very happy. Oh, my love, my love. Senor. Senor, soon I shall bear you a son. Katana. The son of Pedro de Vargas and the grandson of Francisco de Vargas. To think that I shall be his mother. I, Katana Perez, of the Rosario. Perhaps he'll be a priest, maybe a bishop. Oh, my darling. Cortez, back from Villa Rica. Don't wake him, Juan. He's so tired. But the whole army is with Cortez. Must be more than a hundred horses. Quick, Pedro, get up. You are captain of the guard. You've got to get up and meet him. Cortez, hand me my sword. Yeah. Let's go, Juan. Senor de Vargas. My congratulations, sir. Now the governor of Cuba will have ample evidence of what my intentions are. His men have joined our forces. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Juan. Pedro. There, Pedro. It is Diego de Silva. He's alive. But not for long. Juan! De Silva, I'm going to strangle you! Let loose of me, your dog! Let loose of me! I live for this! I live! Uh, get him away from him, de Vargas! Juan, no! Stop it! Why do you stop? Why do you stop me? That swine put my mother on the rack! Tortured her until she prayed for death! Get him away from me! <laughs> That man is a fugitive from justice. Murderer, a matricide. He strangled his own mother. In the name of Santa Hermandad, I demand that he be placed under arrest. Yes, I did it. I killed my own mother to keep this dog and his henchmen from burning her alive at the stake. While she was dying, she blessed me for it. Captain Sandoval, put this man in irons and take him away. I will not let him live. Let me go. I will not let him here is another man who made an attempt in my life, Pedro de Vargas. The Santa Hermandad demands his arrest as a heretic. And as El Supremo of the Santa Hermandad, I myself shall hold an immediate examination. Uh, Captain Cortez, have you ever attended an examination? I have not. It's a valuable experience. I remember one 
of a supposedly honorable family of Hein, one would have thought them above suspicion. Though the evil and treachery of the father and son became clear enough later. Uh, there was, I believe, a girl, about twelve, who refused to bear witness against her parents, and um, it was necessary to tighten ropes about her neck. And... Murderer! I compliment you on a noble feat. The death of a twelve-year-old child. Who spoke of her feat, de Vargas? A stroke of policy, perhaps. A stroke of inhuman fiendishness. Careful, senor. I am his majesty's emissary. Do you take refuge behind that? Refuge? Yes, refuge. Or have you the stomach to meet me man to man? If not, then without picking words, I'll ask you who's the coward here. And the time and place of this meeting? Here and now. De Vargas, are you forgetting where you are? You dare draw your sword on the man who is responsible for our new soldiers? But, sir... The family this man speaks of is my family. The murdered girl was my sister. Do you realize what this man represents? With him, the Santa Hermandad, with all its evils, has come to the new world. A kingdom within a kingdom. A despotism so strong, so powerful, that it paralyzes the human soul with terror. Already he speaks of tightened ropes about her neck and tortured children. I will do, De Vargas. We have no need of oratory here. It's not oratory, Captain Cortez. That man is a fiend without honor, an assassin of infants. Senor de Silva, my apologies. But Captain de Vargas is a loyal officer, and there will be no examinations of any kind while I'm in charge. And de Vargas, if it is necessary to teach 20 rebels the lesson of discipline, that lesson will be taught. Carry that thought with you. Father Bartolome, why have they arrested Pedro? Diego de Silva has been murdered. He did not do it. It was I, and I would do it again. You could not have done it, Juan. You were in irons, and I don't believe Pedro did it either. He gave me his vow a long time ago. He would never break it. Can I go in the jail and see him, Father? No. Katana is with him. It isn't dying that matters. I've faced death many times, but it's leaving you. What's going to become of you, my beloved? I shall die, too. No, you must live. You must live for our son who hasn't yet been born. Oh, Katana, how are you ever going to tell him that his father was hanged? You must go back to my mother and father in Italy. They'll take care of you. But promise me you'll never tell them how I died. My father's a soldier. If I'd died in battle, he'd... He'd grieve for me, yes. But he'd be proud, too. But to be hanged... And for a crime I didn't commit... They're coming. The guards are coming. Kiss me goodbye now. Let me hold you close for this last moment. Goodbye, my love. Pedro... You kept your vow, and God didn't desert you. Coatl. Señor Pedro, my friend, I killed the silver. Me, Coatl. Captain de Vargas reporting, sir. Everything ready to move as planned, sir. Good. This time last year, we were fighting mosquitoes in the swamps, accepting paltry gifts and half-starving. But now we stand knocking at the very door of the great Emperor Montezuma. We shall meet his majesty face to face, have done with ambassadors and specks of gold. This is just the beginning. Devagas, order the first detachment ready to move forward. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, be ready to march. Yes, 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 yes. Greed of gold in everyone's hearts. Adorada mia. Our eyes are open to what lies before us. We do not go forward as conquerors, but as men of God. The sun shines here as fair as in Spain. We will let it shine on all men alike. Here there shall be neither master nor slave. No looking up, 
or looking down. Here all men shall be equal according to God's plan, a haven for the weak, a refuge for the strong, with all the good of the old world and none of its ills. Forward! March! Thank you, Douglas Fairbanks and Paula Morgan. Our stars will return in just a moment. But now, here's a word from RCA Victor. It's good company anywhere. Yes, anywhere, anytime, there's fun at your fingertips with an RCA Victor portable radio. At home or away from home, on your bedside table or at the beach, it's great to own the pick of the portables. An RCA Victor. You'll enjoy that extra range. You'll rave about the tone, thanks to RCA Victor's exclusive golden throat tone system. Yet your RCA Victor portable boasts a compactness and lightness you never dreamed possible. Most important of all, you get the strongest reception ever achieved on battery operation. Because RCA's radio batteries are radio engineered for top performance and extra listening hours. Yes, on every count, an RCA Victor portable radio is good company anywhere. Take your pick of the beautifully styled models at your RCA Victor dealers everywhere. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse brings you a blend of love and laughter when we present the outstanding hit, No Time for Love. Our star will be Claudette Colbert with screen director Mitchell Lyson. Now, here again are tonight's stars, Douglas Fairbanks and Paula Morgan. In Hollywood, when a director is chosen to make a motion picture with a million-dollar budget, he's considered with great care. Just imagine how careful a studio must be when it selects a director for a picture bearing a four- or five-million-dollar budget. Well, Henry King, who directed Captain from Castile, belongs in that extra, extra special class. His work for many years has been completely outstanding. There isn't a producer in Hollywood who wouldn't fight for his services. That's right, Douglas. Ask Mr. Darrell Zanuck and you can be sure he'll agree with you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mr. Henry King. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Paula and Doug. Your performances tonight were wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Paula, on our lot at 20th Century Fox, we consider you a great bet, and it won't be long before your name is a household word. And Doug... I know you're leaving for England in a few days to co-produce Another Man's Poison, starring Betty Davis, Gary Merrill, and Emlyn Williams. Well, bon voyage and the best of luck. Good night. Good night. Good night, Henry. Good night, everyone. And so ends tonight's Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival. Brought to you by Cannon Towels... America's favorite towels that are special values now during the big Cannon Towel sales now going on at your favorite store. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the best cigarette for you to smoke. By the makers of Anison for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. <laughs> Captain from Castile was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, makers of the Daryl F. Zanuck Technicolor production on the Riviera, starring Danny Kaye and Gene Tierney. Douglas Fairbanks may soon be seen in his new comedy, soon to be released, Mr. Drake's Duck, in which he co-stars with Yolande Donlan. Paula Morgan can currently be seen in the Daryl F. Zanuck Technicolor production, David and Bathsheba, starring Gregory Peck and Susan Hayward. The Captain from Castile was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Green Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley. The dramatic director was Warren Lewis. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week when the Screen Director's Playhouse presents No Time for Love, starring Claudette Colbert with Screen Director Mitchell Lyson. Each Saturday night, join the hoedown at Grand Old Opry on NBC. NBC.